Okay, dokie. We have a few people still uh, coming in, but we have just hit three past the hour. So we will get started. Let me just put the agenda notes in the chat. There you are. If you could please add your name to the attendees. And we'll get started. All right. Welcome, everybody, to this week's Qbert Community Meeting. It is the third... The 1st of July, the 3rd of July, 2024, wherever you are joining us from, uh, whether it's live or on YouTube, I, I hope you're having a nice day. Um, do we have anyone this week who is new and would like to take a minute to introduce themselves to the community? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm new. Uh, can you go ahead a little bit? We sure can. Oh, nice. Thanks. So, uh, I'm Daniel. I'm a 25-year-old software engineer, and I just started my journey on Red Hat at the OpenShift virtualization team. Uh, that's uh, basically it. So, nice to meet you all. Nice one. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, so uh, our format for this is, uh, as we go along, if you'd like to add anything to the agenda or the open floor, um, we'll come to those. And similarly, if you ever run into a time when you need a pull request to be looked at and you're just not getting it or you've raised a bug and it's not getting any attention, feel free to come in uh, before the meeting or during the meeting and add it to the relevant section. Okay. Uh, I will... Save our schedule check-in. Oh, let's do it now. Um, I have lost my spot. Actually, let's save the check-in for a minute. Um, so uh, one thing I did want to bring up um, is that Qbert version 1.3 has been delayed by one week. Uh, the reason why there hasn't been a, a mailing list notification is because the PR still hasn't been merged. Um, although uh, I'm, I hear we're going to get some uh, potential context on that. In, in just a minute from Morel. Uh, here is the, um, the PR, which is postponing it. There is an issue with the builds, uh, the build system, the build tool, and uh, there are a couple of bugs. So that is unfortunate, but um, that is uh, open source software delivery for you. Um, conversely, we also have the Qbert version 1.4 schedule, which is what I will click on here. Um, there it is. If you are, if you ever need to know the dates for us and how we relate to um, Kubernetes, um, you can always find that link here in the agenda or in the SIG release ba -ba -ba -bum, uh, repo. So the key dates to always remember are 22nd of October is our uh, 1.4 feature freeze with the GA of the 12th of November. Uh, and that is to coincide with the first day of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con. All righty. Uh, and now I'm going to pass over to Arel, who has the next item. Hello, everyone. Um, can you hear me? I can. Cool. So I wanted to raise uh, again the proposal for network binding plugins and the support for resource overhead um, proposal. So this proposal, I think, was raised uh, last week or the week before. Don't really remember, but this uh, proposal uh, is touching compute components, and I would really love the compute uh, team or the C compute to have a look at this proposal. And there is already a PR that implements part of this proposal, which I will be talking about next. I do not see anyone from uh, Compute here, and so that may well fall on deaf ears. Um, what I might do is uh, CC at Stu and give him uh, It is a public holiday in the United States. Um, I should probably add some context. Um, ah. <laughs> 
Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Um, it, yeah, this has also reminded me that it was this specific thing that we wanted to set up a special meeting next week, right? Could you please uh, repeat? I haven't heard you. Sorry. So last week, so I, I had like um, four meetings after this meeting last week, and it totally slipped my mind. But last week we talked about, I think it was this, having a, um, a small meeting specifically to get people in the room to be able to talk, talk it through and run through. Was that a different issue? I don't think it was this. Okay. In which case, I need to go back to last week's um, meeting and see what I signed up to set up a meeting for. Um, okay, so we'll hear from you in just a second, but I did want to say um, uh, on the subject of Qubit Summit, I have um, been seeing a lot of questions about when we're going to see the recordings. Unfortunately, last night I got, I was, the CNCF got in touch with me to let me know that um, while there is uh, large blocks of recordings, there is an issue with um, a bunch of them. Um, and there is uh, no recourse from the platform side, unfortunately. So there will be delays. I'm not entirely sure what the delays will be. Um, we thought they were going to be next this week. It looks like they might be next week. And I think they're going to send out um, emails to the speakers who have been affected um, to see what we can figure out uh, there. Um, so, yeah, I'm really sorry about that. Um, unfortunately, there's a little I can do and, and nothing other than all of it. So, um, we will let you know when those recordings are up um, so that you can get, get to them. Um, all righty. Aurel, you've got the next one. Yeah, so this PR uh, implements part of the design proposal we've just talked about. Uh, this is a PR that we really want uh, as SIG Network to be uh, merged to 1.3 before it uh, gets released. It's a, basically, it's a bug fix for people who are using the past uh, network binding plugin. And it adds a little API field in order for this bug to be fixed. We need to add a little uh, memory overhead for the compute container in order for past to work correctly uh, if you are using it. And also for this uh, PR, I would really appreciate the views from SIG Compute that's it. Thank you. Did I hear you correctly that uh, you want this to get in 1.3? Yes, this PR was mentioned in the postponement PR Globo created gotcha. on SIG release. Gotcha. Right. Thanks for that. Um, Um, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, there were a couple of FYIs from the mailing list. Um, so what was this one from yesterday? This was just a little, uh, something has been enabled in the Kubernetes 1.3 provider. Um, emails just for your awareness that if you encounter any issues, please report them. Okay. And this one, which is super fresh. A breaking change related to uh, Kubert Core Ansible collections. Um, dropping the feature to simplify the code base. Is Felix here? He is not. Um, are there any objections to dropping this feature immediately in the next major release, or would somebody like to see a transitional phase first? Um, if you have opinions on this, please reply on the mailing list.
Going ahead, we have one bug left to look at. And that will be the end of our agenda. When stopping and restarting a VM, attempting to connect from an SSH client results in a network is unreachable message. Expected to be able to connect. Seems fair. Okay. Create a data volume in the, after the machine. That's ETL. Stop. Start. Run. It is 1.2 on 1.28. That is supported. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any uh, good clues or suggestions that might be able to help this user? Sorry, I just stumbled in, so 30 second rule. Um, is there anybody from the networking team on? Uh, we've got a couple. Yes. Are you able then, Aurel or Eddie, uh, able to provide me, or should I CC you onto this? Well, I'll. It's, it's like you are asking me, it's like someone says that he doesn't manage to do SSH and I don't know what to tell him <laughs> because like, did it work before? Did it work after? It's like, yeah, we could ask him these questions about, um, so I guess, I guess maybe this problem is, uh, is is the same problem that people don't understand that the IP address changes after the reboot. But we can answer it if you want. You can send, send it on. All right. Thank you, Ed. By the way, By the way. Yes. we don't have a way to change the, if something, someone says it's a bug, can we change it to something else? You know? Um, well, I guess you would close another bug. You'd be able to, I mean, we really only have yep. two kinds okay. of issues, right? We've got issue kind. Uh, oh, we have enhancements or, uh, but the problem is here that people are, are opening. I am seeing this a lot. Like, uh, people are opening here a lot of issues that are, that I don't think they are bugs. They are uh, there may be just a request to troubleshoot, and that's like not exactly a bug. But I'm just asking if after some initial discussion uh, you realize that this is like more like a specific setup of someone that he needs help. It's not really a bug. At least it cannot be classified yet as a bug. But it's not not that important. We can continue. I'm just wondering. I mean, to the user, I think it's a bug because it's not working as expected. Because they don't have that special context think, that maybe the um, the IP has changed. Yeah, is that is that not what the uh, um, the triage acceptors label is for? So once we see that it's a bug, we mark it with triage acceptors. So that means that we've accepted it as a bug. But before that, if the user marks it as a bug, we don't. I think there should be labeled triage accepted, and that's generally once once we see that it's a bug, we mark it as triage accepted. Or you see, yeah. No, it's okay. I mean, there are there are two cases that I saw. One is that a bug is not really a bug; it's an enhancement because they want they think it's a bug, but it's something that they want and does not exist. For example, that's pretty simple. And the second one is that, uh, as you, maybe as uh, Andrew said, it's it's a bug from his side, but in reality, this is how it works. So, um, 
But I will, I mean, at the, let's say that you finished the, the troubleshooting and you understand and you don't want to mark it as a bug and you want to close it, but you want to say it's something else. It's like, uh, anyway, I don't know. It's like, um, let's, let's continue. I'll think about it more. Just looking. Do we, we might say the networking stuff, but do we actually say in the accessing virtual machines part of our user guide that if the VMs restarted, the IP will have changed? I, I don't think, I don't know. We could, we could, I mean, Maybe that's like a opportunity to open. No, but this, and the, maybe there is an opportunity to open some kind of uh, knowledge base, but I don't think we have something like that. You cannot Isn't try there everything. Uh, what? Oh, maybe Isn't we could open. Uh, um, what do you mean? Well, isn't, isn't that our, our master, our go-to font of knowledge? Yeah, but for example, uh, like, uh, like um, maybe a do either a document, it's like either you have a Stack Overflow like uh, system or you have like a document that outlines some common, uh, common behaviors that you can write there so people can review it, review it, and understand all kinds of uh, behaviors that maybe they are not expecting. Maybe we should have a document like that. An FAQ. Yeah. And I would counter that, which I, I actually quite like that idea. Um, I'd counter that with, well, if it's a frequently asked question, why isn't it just in our user documentation? Because the user documentation usually uh, tries to focus on the happy path, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to put the unhappy path, then you need to consider <laughs> setups, and uh, and then your your document will be doubled or more. So we expect, yeah. Fair enough. Well, with thoughts like that, I'm glad that you have agreed to have a look at this bug, and we can add uh, triage accepted if you do find that there's any uh, issues with that. Um, Brian, since you brought this up and we've got a little bit of time, I hope this doesn't bore anyone. Um, but do, do we have, is that commonly understood? Do we see that quite a lot with regards to bugs? Cause I'm not sure if I really see that in this project, um, using triage labels. Am I just not paying attention or is that something that we could improve uh, communication of? It's probably something that we would have done. A while, a while ago, I think I've seen Daniel doing it a few times where you'd add triage needs more information or something on a bug if there need, if there's questions on the bug. So he would ask, you know, he'd, he'd mark the bug with that label and then while that label is there, then the bug doesn't get any more attention until it's removed kind of thing. Um, I, I don't know if there's one for kind of declassifying it as a bug, but um, yeah, the triage accepted is generally when we say, yes, that's definitely a bug. We need to work on that kind of thing. Good to know. Thank you very much. We That does bring us to the end of our agenda. Uh, Stu, since you did come in late, I did tag you on uh, these two issues. Um, the network binding plugin um, design proposal and also the network binding plugin um, pull request. Both need someone from SIG Compute to have a review, um, the latter being a 1.3 blocking bug and the former being a design proposal um, that is ready to go. Uh, so if you could please um, poke someone to be able to have a look at those two, that'd be great. All right. That brings yeah, us to the- you just share those with me uh, uh, um, out of band so I can, I can't see your screen very well. Oh, okay. They're in the agenda. Do you need a link to the agenda? Oh, perfect. Nope, I got it. Thank you. Yep, sweet. Um, both of the uh, points raised by Omison. 
Wonderful. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, or wherever you are. I um, hope you have a lovely day, and we will see you all again next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.